Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android Guy. Hey guys, so today I'm bringing you the much anticipated Samsung Galaxy S4 review. Now, as you know, I am not like most reviewers. I do not use the device for like 10 minutes and then do a review. This is from extraneous use on this device uh, for over three weeks and just really kind of seeing, you know, what makes this the best product out or if it really uh, does deliver that and deserve that title. So uh, we're going to take a look at this and see overall which one is the best, if it is this one, if it's another model that deserves that moniker, or which one will reign supreme over the summer. Let's check it out. And we'll start off by going over a couple of features. For the first feature on this phone, it has definitely gone under much scrutiny, and that is the look and feel. Uh, when it comes to this phone, I think I can pretty much easily say now that all the reviewers that uh, saw this at the unpacking are idiots. Yep, I said it. All of them are idiots. Uh, a lot of them complained about, oh my god, it doesn't feel premium at all, and about that. And I can tell you honestly that they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Um, and what I mean by that is, is really when you hold this phone in your hand, you definitely get a more premium feel than they had let on. Uh, it's super light, very thin, um, and very easy to go across. Samsung did do an extraordinary job when it comes to making it lighter, thinner, and narrower compared to the S3. Um, and it's not only surprising that you were able to do that, but do such really just a five inch screen, so a bigger screen and a bigger battery within one device. Now, I know the plastic is a lot of the undertaking that gets like, oh man, you know, it's so bad. I like polycarbonate plastic. I really like the way it feels. Now, I would say more questionable, more so is their hyperglaze coating, uh, which you know was not as easy to hold before, but um, I think it is. It definitely feels a lot more premium, especially compared uh, to the S3 and the Note 2. I think they're going to step in the right direction. Uh, whether they choose to go, you know, for more metal and everything like that, from customers' feedback now, we'll wait and see. But I definitely like the way this one feels, and everyone that I've actually, you know, handed this to, and I tell them, hey, how do you think this feels? And they're like, oh man, it feels great. It's just like, you know, it's so good. Not to mention also the Gorilla Glass 3 on here really makes the screen feel different. I definitely advise anyone to take a look at this phone and see how it feels because it just feels really nice. The screen feels really nice. And not only that, but you know, of course it's sensitive to the point where you can use it with gloves and even nails. Uh, so I think that uh, overall the look and feel, I like it. It is a preference of course, um, as a lot of um, these features can be, you know, and it depends on the user. Uh, so if you like it or not. I like it because, you know, it's light enough to where if I put a case on it, it's not going to feel like a brick, like phones like the HTC One, I feel definitely do. Um, so we're really going to see um, a division here, but um, I'll definitely obviously consider your thoughts on this part. I really like it. My best advice is to go out and feel it. If you can, try to ask an associate to see if you can feel one off the cord so you can really feel how light and how premium I feel that it feels. Okay. So when it comes to hardware, the S4 is by far the most impressive uh, device out there, boasting a 1.9 quad-core uh, from Qualcomm. So this is a six um, under or 400, sorry, um, processor, which uh, is definitely a top-tier processor that stands out very well. Even with the uh, prototype model I had, I found it uh, destroying every benchmark score out there. Uh, this is a faster version compared to like the 1.7 found on the HTC One, and depending on the benchmarks you're looking at, it even beats out the octa-core processor from the overseas version. Uh, depending on, again, which one you're looking at in terms of uh, some 3D benchmark test, like the 3D Mark, it does better, but it all depends. It also has two gigs of RAM, which is uh, very impressive for multitasking, although this phone does take a little bit more RAM built in than the previous versions of the Note 2 and S3. 
you also have a 1080p LED screen. Now this is the only one of its kind right now in the US. Other manufacturers are coming out with 1080p LCD phones, but it still doesn't match up to LED. Brighter, sharper, clear, and not to mention much more battery efficient compared to LCD. You also have a really nice uh, visual uh, because of not only the screen, but Gorilla Glass 3 makes it very scratch resistant and very nice uh, and easy to the touch. You have a 2600 milliamp battery charging the device itself, along with the um, keeping the status quo of a micro SD card expandable slot. They can add up to 64 gigs. The internal storage varies between 16 and 32 gig models depending on your carrier as well as the price point. In terms of add-ons, you also get a nice feature such as an IR blaster at the top, which will allow you to have an app such as Watch On to be able to control your TV, your top box, DVD players, Blu-ray players, and even your friends' TVs for fun. These hardware specs are definitely impressive while all in a smaller compact phone with a 5 inch screen that leaves very little bezel around the sides. Now what about software and other features? Well let's take a look. Now when it comes to web browsing, the S4 boasts its stock browser along with of course additional browsers you can download. The stock browser though is quickly becoming um, more and more um, the best one I would say for the most part for all purposes simply for the fact that you have all of Samsung's add-ons with this uh, one, with this browser. So you can use their air view effects um, which you know might not matter as much to everyone but it does have its advantages as well as their air view and air magnification so if you ever wanted to read an app or switch between your tabs you just have those abilities. Now, many will write these off as gimmicks, which for web browsing, I don't find myself using this as often, but I like their stock browser for other purposes, such as when I go to menu, I do like some of the things uh, like incognito mode, uh, which you know typically you would hope to find it on the Chrome browser, but it's not as easy. Uh, not only that, but I like the uh, quick print ability that you have uh, with this device and this does work with all HP printers out of the box so it's a very nice uh, quick print setting and finally I like on the accessibility uh, the fact that you can actually uh, force the zoom very easily, scale and uh, just make it a really nice uh, viewing experience. So it's just a really uh, simple browser but I think it does a bit of a better job in even some ways compared to uh, browsers out there like Chrome. Definitely faster and uh, very fluid when pinched zooming. And uh, usually good with double tapping, even if it is loading momentarily, it's generally a quick response. So uh, really good overall for web browsing and all of its additional features just make it really stand out even uh, more so compared to other devices and its resolution allows you to see from far away very clear text. So on web browsing, it's no slouch. Now when it comes to music, there's a couple of different ways to get your music on an Android device. Of course there's always the stock music player, which on Samsung they kept pretty streamlined and uh, of course you have uh, the ability to use their features again such as voice command like play, pause, stop, things like that. So it's really ac um, really has a lot of features such as that. Um, the nice part about it is too, it sounds very strong. whether it be a ballad or more of a rock or hip hop song. Um, so you have a couple of different options. Now I, as you know, get most of my music from Google Music simply because it's an online storage with 20,000 songs that I can bring over um, if I was an iTunes user or if I was a Zune user 
or if I discuss my songs illegally, which of course I never have, and you know, shame to yourself if you have. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, depending on what song or genre you like, it just really does it well. Now, what you can also do is always download a third party app to make it even stronger, such as I have with Volume Plus. Now, with Volume Plus, not only can you boost your volume, which I don't really tend to do, uh, but you can make um, equalizers so such as beats uh, this will make it exactly sound uh, like the HTC 1x per se uh, beats is only a software it's not a hardware um, uh, despite what most people think um, on your uh, sound and if you have good headphones whether it be by beats or monster or any other ones it'll sound really great with beat simulation I actually even like good quality sometimes over beat simulation, but for this feature I thought I'd show you with the beat simulation side. And if you want to, you can always take off the equalizer setting, let the music player app decide what your equalizer will be, and just put the volume really high. Uh, be careful, it does tell you a discrepancy of, you know, don't raise it past 10, um, or else it will get really high and might blow out your speaker. Um, this app, uh, Volume Plus, is uh, one i nine and great for um, this phone and any other phone you might be you might be using. Now, when it comes to watching videos, there really is just no comparison on any other device on any other platform. Just nothing compares to this device. Not only uh, do you have a 1080p LED screen, which I'll show you a video in a second. But you have the ability to play any file type. And when I mean any file type built in, I not only mean things like DivX, but I mean that you have the ability to play MKVs, a file type which, until this device, I have not ever been able to play smoothly as I can on here. So uh, kudos to Samsung on that aspect, because um, it's one that I have a lot of MKV videos that um, are essentially uh, Blu-ray rips, if you're not sure what those are, and you can play them very well. When you watch a video, though, it really is just a pleasure to watch. In terms of everything from clarity to color reproduction, just everything looks perfect. Like you're watching a 1080p LED screen on your HDTV, but it's now in a 5-inch screen version. So it goes very well with the device. And... If there's one thing you can enjoy is watching, you know, everything from built-in videos to Google movies to YouTube to Netflix and uh, basically anywhere you get your videos, you will have a great time with this device. Now, when it comes to a camera, this is very crucial to most buyers of cell phones, simply because this is really our main camera now, our cell phones. So um, I can honestly say I have never used a better cell phone camera than the Samsung Galaxy S4. I played around even with the Lumias, and um, all around, this just gives a total overall better experience, even compared to ones like the 920. Now, of course, I'm not counting the pure view ones because, well, we only count ones that have real operating systems. JK, JK. All right, uh, so really simplified the layout of this. Now you have camera and video right on the front. Um, you have your filters right here. So if you wanted to push the arrow, you can see all the different filters and it gives you a preview of it. Now, of course, other manufacturers have had this kind of stuff for a while, but it's nice that Samsung added it to theirs. You also have modes, which if you're unfamiliar with the modes, they give you a really nice uh, annotation of kind of like what they mean. And, you know, so that way you can actually figure out, oh, that's what this is for. Oh, that's what this is for. So it's just a really nice uh, simplified version. And then once you learn them, you can uh, put them in the easier to view uh, grid mode, which is right here. 
and you can see them uh, all at once. Now, another uh, great feature is a dual shot, which you can turn on uh, both cameras at the same time to have the person taking the photo in the photo. Now, I've done a video on that and why I think it's nice, um, especially for vloggers out there, it's the best thing ever. However, um, my favorite feature by far on this phone, actually, is this right here, which is auto night detection. It brings uh, photo quality and low light to a whole nother level, and it does it without using the flash. Now, I've uh, done uh, camera comparisons between this phone and other ones out there like the 920, like the iPhone 5, as well as the brand new HTC One. And in terms of low light, this has no equal. Simply because this is your regular automatic, which looks crappy and noisy and doesn't look that appealing. And then you just switch it on low light mode, or sorry, auto night detection as they call it. And this is what you get. This is the same exact area and it's just a world of difference. And uh, this is what I've really liked and I have yet to use the flash after using this phone for three weeks. I have yet to use the flash even in like uh, dark club settings. I was able to go from like this and even darker uh, to really bright photos that I could easily see. Um, so really nice effect that this um, phone has. It's just really unparalleled and it doesn't even wash out with really bright sunlight. Uh, stays very clear and very detailed in all of its areas. Um, it really has impressed a lot of people and definitely check out the camera comparisons between this and the S3 and the iPhone 5 uh, for a brief overview on that. If gaming is your forte, the S4 is pretty much the best thing you can get out there right now. Not only does it play games uh, very smoothly and very well, but the fact is that Samsung always takes into account to attach a, a PS3 controller to it if need be. This is out of the box working and it just works very well. Now if you don't have one, it's still obviously really great and will play very smoothly. But I definitely prefer the PS3 controller. As you can see, I can't shoot as well without it. Check out my gaming review for more in-depth look at those, but uh, definitely very smooth, never stutters uh, really at all. Even on high-end games, it does a very good job. And that you win. Battery life. Now wasn't this the big question on everyone's mind? Well, battery life is actually very good on this device. So uh, really great to hear for that. Um, I typically, unless I'm doing a lot of videos that day, I can typically easily not have to recharge it till the end of the night. Uh, so definitely improved upon compared to the S3. Still not, uh, you know, the two day phone of the Note 2 that I was able to get, uh, but definitely one day of solid usage, no problem. And I mean, not when you get off of work, but more so when you uh, go to sleep. So yeah, definitely um, really easy. And of course you have the ability, um, if you turn down the brightness on this device, forget about it. You'll easily last a day to uh, possibly day and a half, uh, depending on the users. Um, also with all of the extra features that you can turn off, it uh, only extends your battery life, especially ones like power saving mode, which can do things like slow down your processor and conserve your battery life if you're too lazy to. So for battery life, there is uh, really, uh, for a five inch and lower screen phone, there is uh, no better battery life, uh, with the exception of I believe the Razer Max is uh, less than a five inch, so uh, that would be the only one. Other than that, uh, compared to the top selling phones out there, like uh, the iPhone 5, the uh, Galaxy S3, the HTC One, LG Optimus G Pro, there's just, uh, it beats it in spades. So, a uh, very good job for battery life, which can be very important to an average user. 
extras, extras. There is no one that does it better than Samsung. Point blank simple. Um, you can say uh, they're gimmicks, you can say they're useful, you can say whatever you want. Point is that most likely you will end up using at least a few of these extras. So not only do you have a bunch of apps that add uh, to certain functionality, the most important ones I would say being at the top, uh, such as your remote control feature, such as uh, Polaris Office, which allows you to create, edit, or um, create your own Word documents, PowerPoint, Excel, video editor, which is a really great video editor that puts the little Zoe feature to shame, um, group play, which allows you to directly connect, um, and just not to mention so many settings and so many uh, different features. Samsung rules at this, uh, and I have for one have found a couple of useful. Um, not all of them, I will say that, of course, but a couple were really useful. Uh, to check out those, I would say check out the top 15 features on the Galaxy S4 and where I break down the most useful ones to maybe the ones you'll never really use that often. Uh, but extras, Samsung has in spades, and not to mention the hardware extras such as removable battery, still being a very key component of the phone, and the fact that you have a micro SD card slot to add on storage at any time you want. These extras go a long way with me. Don't know if they will with you though. Price, it always comes down to price. Well, in terms of price point, the Galaxy S4, I would say is very competitively priced for your money. However, not all carriers are created equal. Uh, we do not yet know Verizon's price point at the time of this review. However, for the other carriers, we do know that AT&T will give the 16 gig version for $199. Uh, Sprint will be giving it for $249. However, if you are a new customer and not a continuing customer, you do get $100 off, So, which would make it $149. And with T-Mobile's new uncarrier price point, they are putting it at $149 as well as a down payment. So. In terms of a phone comparing to other price points, uh, let's go with AT&T since that's the easiest one to go by. Uh, for $199 price point, uh, very competitively priced, uh, you have only phones such as the iPhone 5, the BlackBerry Z10, and the HTC One at that same price point. For at that uh, for that price, I would not recommend any other phone except for the Galaxy S4. The reason I say that is for the price, you're getting more out of your phone than the competitors. You really have a lot of nice features, and although their complaint was, uh, the only real complaint about this phone was really the hardware uh, being that, oh, it's not a premium feel, then get a case. That's the only main complaint comparing to those products. So, but will that be enough to win the day in the overall review score? Let's check it out. So finally, in the overall review score of this phone, it really is the best one out there. Um, if I had a point system, I would give it a 10 out of 10. It really is just the best one out there. And that's why I feel that the Galaxy S4 deserves that title. It's not just because, you know, that there are a lot of great phones out there. The iPhone 5, the HTC One, the LG Optimus G Pro, the Note 2, the S3 even still. Um, a lot of these, the Lumia 920, and they all are really great phones. But it's getting to the point where you not only have to be a great phone, you have to be the best phone, especially if you're at the same price point. I would say um, that it's easy to predict that uh, companies such as HTC and BlackBerry will have to lower their price point uh, to most likely the 149 or 99 to actually stay up to sales compared to the Galaxy S4 but also that uh, we might even see the iPhone 5 drop to 149 since they're not going to have another phone come out for at least most likely three to four months, which means that the Galaxy S4 will be really have no competition. So that's why I really uh, feel that yes, this phone does deserve the best phone currently out on the market. Now, um, I do recommend you check out all of the other videos to get a better assessment to see how it feels and how you like the look of it and if all the features are really right for you. Um, in terms of a good battery life device, a amazing looking screen that has no equal, 
and a amazing camera that really just trans tra tramples the competition, you really can't go wrong with the Galaxy S4. I don't think anyone that purchases this device will regret it. And I definitely give it my seal of approval. Feel free to ask any questions on the device and check out all the latest videos on my new website, R-I-C-K-Y, theandroidguy.com. Thank you for watching. Please give a like and thumbs up if you found this helpful. And this is me signing off. This is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android Guy.